God, you are enough. Speak to us. Move us. Conform us to the image of your Son. May you be honored this morning with what is said, with what is done. Begin to take the cares and concerns of this world away from us this morning. Give us ears to hear your word and your word alone. May your word fall on good soil, fertile soil. May you be high lifted up. May you be glorified and honored, not with us, Lord, in ourselves, but in us through your Son, Jesus. These things we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Please open God's infallible and inerrant and inspired word to 1 John chapter 2, starting in verse 15. 1 John, we'll start in chapter 2, verse 15, and we'll go through verse 17. Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life, is not from the Father, but is from the world. The world is passing away, and also its lusts. But the one who does the will of God lives forever. And God bless the reading of His Word. The world and all its systems and manipulations, it draws our heart from God. Now, Scripture doesn't specifically say who 1 John was wrote to, uh, whether this is a letter or a sermon, uh, but we do know that biblical truth is truth, and it will be applicable and practical for us, the Christians, today. This is a command and a warning that is given here, <clears throat> and this is a serious matter. It's very urgent and important for believers even today. We must be on constant guard with the world and what it has to offer. It's very alluring and pretty and tempting. It attempts to sneak in and supplant the love for God to replace the love of God. Do you hold to the world and its priorities? Do you like the world's economy? Do you like the world's theories and philosophies? Do you love the world? Verse 15. Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I read this verse this week. Uh, it was Thursday. Uh, I read it out loud at, at the lunch table. I worked night shift, so it was during the day. Uh, that's kind of our dinner time is lunch time. And uh, Caroline, she picks up little bits and pieces and phrases that we say. And uh, she said, Daddy, why you not say love the world? So she didn't understand, but she heard, not love. You know, we're always told, love, love, love. Show love, love your brother. Love daddy, daddy loves you. So she said, why not love? And so you may be thinking this morning, why not love? Well, John 3, 16, for God so loved. So are we to love or are we not to love? Well, here this word, world, is speaking about the fallen world, the twisted world, the dark world. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 calls Satan the God of this world. John 12.31 calls Satan the ruler of this world. You see, John's telling his audience, don't love this wicked world, this temporal world, this self-pleasing and self-serving and twisted dark world. Don't love this world that is apart from Christ. This world is not only apart from Christ, it is anti-Christ, meaning it is against Christ. Don't love this world. Don't love Satan's economy. Don't love what he has to offer you. And if you do love the world, the love of God is not in you. We're not left with any wiggle room here. There's no middle ground. There's no gray area. There's no neutral state. Um, there's no special circumstances. It's an if-then. If you love the world, then the love of God is not in you. In James, we read, friendship with the world is enmity with God. Enmity means hostile. So if we are friends with this world, with 
Satan's world, we're hostile towards God. Jesus says, it's recorded in the Gospels in Matthew and in Luke, he says, you cannot serve two masters. You'll love the one and hate the other, or you'll despise the one and be devoted to the other. Are you seeing this? Loving the world and loving God, it don't mix. It don't jive. You can't have both. So in verse 15, we just read, don't love the world nor the things in the world. So in verse 16, we're going to see exactly what is in the world the world. Verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life, it's not from the Father, but it is from the world. The lust of the flesh. Or the lust of the body refers to self-indulgence, wrong desires, uh, drunkenness, gluttony, sensual and physical desires apart from the Word of God, from the will of God. It's not in accordance to God's word. These lusts of the flesh can be summarized as what you long to possess and enjoy outside of the will of God. These things are the lusts of the flesh. The lust of the eyes. You long for other people's possessions. Do you want other people's wealth? Do you covet other people's items? See, it's not only items. It can be circumstances. It can be their lifestyle, their situations. It's not just the physical that you can lust after with your eyes. You can want other people's situations. Do you want that? It can be summarized as what I can't bear to see others have and enjoy. The lust of the eyes. The pride of life. We want attention. We want honor. We desire the praise and recognition of men. We want to be the one high lifted up. We want the world to accept us and approve of us. And, you know, we're worried about, well, what will they say? What will the world think? What will people think of me? If I really love God, if I'm devoted to Him, what will people really think? Are we worried about that? So what do we do then? Well, we begin to make compromises. We make compromises and hope that the world will like us. And we begin to make compromises with the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. And these compromises begin to show up in our language, in our time management, in our devotion to God. These compromises begin to show up in the way we dress, in the way we do or do not love others, in our entertainment choices, in our music, in our hobbies, in our friendships. They can even begin to show up in how much we value life itself. And you may be thinking, well, here he goes. He's getting all legalistic on me. Here's the, here's the list. No. Don't be confused. It's not legalism. We have no time for legalism. Legalism has no place in the heart of the believer. You see, I humbly submit to you what Scripture says. If you love the world, the love of God is not in you. I'm not talking about some, some pseudo-piety or self-righteousness or self-manufactured weirdness just for the sake of being weird. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm, I, I am talking about Christ's likeness, Christ's mindedness, hating sin and all its effects and all its manipulations. This is loving Christ and serving God and being conformed to the image of His Son. This is not legalism. This is wanting Christ so much more than anything that this world can offer us. It's being convicted by the Holy Spirit. This is not legalism. This is a willing subjection to the moving of the Spirit. This is a willing humbleness and servitude to our Lord. This is not the attitude of legalism. But it's serving because you want to serve. Because you couldn't imagine serving anyone else. You see, legalism comes from the outside. 
it's it's regulated by external forces, by human means. You see, it's it's outside. That's legalism. What I speak of is change from the inside. From within. From a regenerated heart. From a heart that seeks after God. Legalism, excuse me. Legalism comes from without. It's not what we're speaking about today. It has some two by fours here on the side. <laughs> but what I speak about is every generator. This is inside. It's not from outside. And we know it's not always easy. I'm not here to trick you or trick myself. The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, they begin to creep in. Little by little. Little roots they plant. So we must be on guard. We must seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness and His agenda, not our own. And because of this internal change, this new life in Christ, we begin to see how beautiful Jesus really is. And we desire to obey the Father and to not grieve the Holy Spirit. We know that the love of the Father is much stronger, much richer, much deeper, much fuller than anything the evil one could ever offer us. Verse 17. The world is passing away. And also its lusts. But the one who does the will of God lives forever. This sinful world, Satan's economy, it's fleeting, it's temporary, it has an expiration date, it's not going to last. You see, it's, it's passing, it's moving away. When we view the world as God views the world, we begin to see that the world and all it has to offer is just an illusion. When we see the world through the eyes of God, through Scripture, we begin to see that it's just, it's just temporary. The world promises fulfillment and happiness and purpose, yet the more we consume, the more we want. We never reach that ultimate happiness in the world, and we never can finally grasp the true purpose in the world. See, true purpose in the eyes of the world is fleeting. It's never attainable. A true view of the world reveals a world that is passing away, a dark world, a fallen world, a world that is condemned already. When we begin to see the world as the Father sees the world, its charm begins to weaken. It can't fully entice us anymore when we get a correct and true perspective of this world. Please turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, we'll start with verse 14. Listen here to what Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, speaking to the church at Corinth has to say, and, and what these uh, rhetorical questions are that he asked. 2 Corinthians 6, start at verse 14. <clears throat> Do not be bound together with unbelievers. For what partnership have righteousness and lawlessness? Of course, we know the answer is they don't. For what fellowship has light with darkness? It doesn't. For what harmony has Christ with the will or Satan? And we know there is no harmony there. For what has the believer in common with an unbeliever? The answer should be we have nothing in common. For what agreement has the temple of God with idols? Again, there is no agreement. There are opposite ends here. For we are the temple of the living God, just as God said. I will dwell in them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from their midst and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean. And I will welcome you, and I will be a father to you, 
and you shall be my sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. Are you a son or daughter of the Lord Almighty? Have your eyes been opened to see that you do love this world? You're a slave to the lust of the flesh. You're a slave to the lust of the eyes. You're a slave to the pride of life. That you do not love God, nor do you have the love of the Father. Then the Word of God tells you to repent and believe in Christ alone for the forgiveness of sins. But dear Christian here this morning, dear believer, are the whispers and temptations of this world beginning to take root in you? Are they working their way into your life? Are they trying to replace the love of God? Then come out from their midst and be separate. Come away. Come away. Separate yourself. And don't touch what is unclean. You love the world and the things of the world. Or do you love God? If you love Him, then do His will. That it may be well with your soul, that you may live forever in service to our Heavenly Father. Be separate. Separate yourself. Again, this is not legalism. This is not, this is a checklist. This is not, you must feel bad if you don't live up to what your pastor says or what your mom says or what checklist you have hanging up. No, that, that's not it. That's outside regulation. That's manipulation. That, that's not what we're talking about. This comes up from within. This is a regenerated heart. This is being born of God. I want His agenda. Not what anyone else has to offer. This is servitude. This isn't slavery. This is servitude. Yes, you are a slave in a sense, but this is a willing servitude, a humbleness. It's not a have to, I got to, I must to. It's a I want to. I really want to. Let me leave you with this encouragement and with this charge. Do not love the world or the things in this world. It's not our home. We're just passing through. Those of you who are born again this morning, we're just pilgrims here. We're foreigners. We're exiles. We're strangers. We're aliens. We don't belong here. This should be our attitude. We are not home yet. We just don't belong here. We just don't fit in. <laughs> I'm homesick for a place I've never even been. Are you homesick this morning for a place that you've never been? Or are you consumed with this world, with this country, with its laws, its regulations, its elections? Now, of course, we know where to love our neighbors. We are to obey the laws of the land, and we are to pray for reform. That's not what I'm speaking about. What I'm speaking about is that you become so consumed and so focused on the here and now, on what's going on around us, that we forget what Paul says in Philippians. He says, your citizenship is in heaven. This is not our city. This is not our home. The book of Hebrews tells us we're seeking a city that is to come. It's taking your eyes off of all this and being consumed with all this. You're worried about what the world has to say about me. Just, just want to go home. But in the meantime, I'm going to live for you. Forget what the world says. Scripture tells us it's passing away. It will expire. It will fall by the wayside. We're 
seeking a city that is to come. We're homesick for a place we've never even been. I recently heard a pastor say that he loves this country. But he said this. He said, I love my country, but my country is not my kingdom. Let us not forget that our kingdom is the kingdom of God. Our kingdom is the kingdom of heaven. And yes, we have a little foretaste of heaven. We have family that we can meet with. We have like-minded believers that we come and worship. Um, we can even see the beauty of our Creator and His creation and nature around us. We have little snippets of heaven. These little snippets, they're just mere glimpses. They're just little tastes. They're just samplings of what is to come. It's just a glimpse of heaven on this side of eternity. But it's not our home. This is not our home. Do you long for a place you've never been? Humanly speaking, hotels are nice, vacations are nice. Uh, I'll even say visiting the in-laws are nice. But there's just something about going home to your house. There's that comfort, that relaxation, their safety. I think we just like the familiarity. It's just something about going home. Let me conclude with this. Do not love the world or the things of the world. Don't love its lust, don't love its pleasure, don't love its pride, it's passing away. But the one that does the will of God, the man, the woman, that does the will of God, will live forever. Brothers and sisters, the best is yet to come. We're just passing through. Let's pray. Father, you know our hearts, you know our motives, you know our desires, you know who we truly are, you know what we truly want. Lord, search us. Reveal your eternal thoughts and truths to us. Holy Spirit, convict us and change us. God, we ask that your will be done. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.